So in today's video, I'm talking about the health and biohacking tools you guys should be utilizing as entrepreneurs on a daily basis, the likes of which being Apple Watch, for example, Aura Rings, Whoop Bands, and what devices you guys should be utilizing and the ones I've been testing myself personally over the past year to 18 months. So when it comes to quantifying your health and performance, one key variable to be assessing is metric data, of course. And there's nothing better to quantify your health like cold hard numbers, similar to, for example, assessing your profit margins when it comes to your business also, okay? So when it comes to, for example, quantifying variables like your sleep, some individuals may be saying their sleep is fully optimized or their sleep is very well set, but in all actuality, their sleep is really, really poor in terms of performance, but they can't assess their metric data, okay? Similar to, for example, saying like you have a million pounds in your bank account, but you can't actually check your banking data app Therefore, you actually have no clue how much money is left in your bank, of course. So metric data is a massively, massively important part of the process of optimizing your health and performance. And it's something that I track very, very intensely with the clients we work with in the peak performance program with our elite level clients. The reason as to why metrics are so important when it comes to optimizing your health and performance is very simple. They can be very positive psychological impact factors or influences. So for example, in terms of the positive feedback loop element of optimizing your sleep, let's say for example, you wear your aura ring for the first night and your readiness score is set at 55. Over the period of a month, you could be further improving your sleep in terms of optimizing that as a variable. And as a result of that, your sleep readiness score may be 99 on a given day. That obviously in terms of feedback, even the positive aspect of that is gonna encourage you to incorporate that behavior as a lifelong process. And therefore in terms of ingraining that habit, it's gonna be very, very important and very significant as well. So metrics, I cannot stress enough, are very important when it comes to the process of optimizing your health and performance as an entrepreneur. Similar to, for example, again, as, a, as referred to in a business sense, you know your business is doing very well if your profit margins are obviously becoming bigger and bigger and you're generating more cash flow with the business. It's very similar to health and performance, of course. So first metric device I want to talk about in today's video and is often used by entrepreneurs like myself, for example, is an Apple Watch. I believe this is, I don't even know which series this is now. I've had this for about two years or so. Massive advocate of the product. and I've been utilizing it, as I said, for about two, three years, even when I was training as a tennis player, previously speaking. So when it comes to the advantages of using an Apple Watch, we have a very simple list here. Obviously continuous heart rate monitoring, obviously it's a sleep design. I do like the design of the Apple Watch, very minimal. And obviously you can change the wristbands frequently, which I like as well. Water resistance, so often when I'm doing cardiovascular work in the pool, for example, it could be like a half an hour long session or interval session. Obviously I can still track my training performance in the pool as well, which is great. Obviously I can play music on that or I can use my phone to play music through that whilst I'm on my cardio runs, for example. And also I can get my notifications. So if, for example, um, I am working and I need to be responding to WhatsApp messages or whatever it may be in a social environment, obviously get the notification come up on my phone as well. Now, one positive of the Apple Watch, which people fail to kind of utilize, I think in this space in particular, is the connection between the Apple Watch, the health app and the Aura Ring. So for example, I wear my Aura Ring on a daily basis throughout the entire day and the night. I charge it once per week and the battery lasts that entire time. But if, for example, I am training, I do not want a ring on whilst I'm handling a barbell because it gets quite scratchy, the ring gets affected, it gets damaged a little bit, as you might see here. There's a little bit of wear and tear and it's not particularly comfortable. So what I do instead is I take off my Aura Ring, which should come off pretty easily. I take off my Aura Ring and I simply track my activity with my watch whilst I'm training. So it inform me of things like my heart rate, calories ex expended whilst I am training, obviously the intensity of the session as well, and duration of the session. What it will then do is it will store that data in the health app and that will connect with the activity aspect of the Aura Ring. So if I bring that up on screen quickly, I'll also bring it up on my phone. It's really, really helpful to see how many calories I've expended per day. And obviously it's gonna influence my um, HRV also. So from an activity perspective, let's go back to Tuesday. So I can see, for example, that my activity was 72. I did 32.6 kilometers. I mean, I ran 15K that morning as well, and then obviously trained also, and I burnt 4,640 calories. So I can see from feedback from both my Apple Watch and my Aura Ring syncing together, that that day was very high in terms of activity. Therefore, the next day I should be taking it a little bit more easy also. Uh, when it comes to the pro, sorry, the cons of wearing an Apple Watch, we have a very simple list as well. It's not hugely accurate when it comes to metrics like your heart rate, for example, and you definitely should not be relying on it when it comes to tracking your sleep. Um, again, please utilize something like an Aura Ring. Um, it is compatible with any an iPhone, which is obviously negative also, and it is highly distract distractive. So if, for example, you fail to turn off your notifications on your phone or put your phone in airplane mode, um, like I personally do, do until 2 p.m., so once I've completed my deep work blocks, it can be flooded by constant notifications from WhatsApp, iMessenger, whatever it may be. It's not going to be particularly helpful. So make sure you're turning off your notifications or you're putting your Apple Watch or your phone on airplane mode, of course. Now, next metric device is going to be a Fitbit. Um, again, I get asked frequent questions about whether or not they should, people should be purchasing a Fitbit. Obviously, it's a little bit more price friendly for most individuals. So I'll just dive into it quickly. So the pros of this are very simple, very user friendly. Obviously, it's very affordable. Many options and models of the Fitbit in terms of colorways and also device 
in terms of the development of the device as well. It's comfortable and it connects to other apps on your phone, whether it be Android or Apple based. Uh, the cons of that are you must use your phone or computer to access the metrics and it can be inaccurate in terms of data. So again, I've utilized all of these tools myself and assessed them also. I wasn't a massive fan of the Fitbit when it comes to metric data and the feedback you get from it, um, nor in terms of its accuracy, I didn't think it was particularly accurate at all. So as a result of that, I ditched the device pretty quickly. Next metric device is going to be a Whoop Band. Now I'm always asked whether or not you should be purchasing a Whoop Band over an Aura Ring or an Aura Ring over a Whoop Band by individuals in the space of entrepreneurship. Because it's, again, Whoop Band's a relatively new product. It's quite exciting. Obviously it's a wrist strap as opposed to a ring. And for some people that may be a little bit more appealing from an aesthetic perspective. But in my opinion, Whoop doesn't quite trump an Aura Ring. I think Aura Ring much further exceeds the accuracy of a Whoop Band and therefore you should be purchasing an Aura Ring. So when it comes to the pros of a Whoop Band, I'll, I'll fill you guys in. Obviously they're incredibly affordable. I don't know if you guys are aware, but you purchase the band on a subscription basis. So it can be like a six month on contract in which you're paying $30 per month, as opposed to for example, the Aura Ring, which you are paying all up front. Obviously they're very sleek. They look pretty nice. They're very clean. Obviously it's a wristband as opposed to a ring. Some people may prefer that. So that is a potential pro as well. It sends your sleep start times and bedtime reminders frequently through your app on your phone, um, which can be very helpful also. But having said that, Aura Ring does also do that. It tracks your naps, which is obviously great as well, and it is very, obviously it's water resistant also, so very user friendly from that perspective. The cons of a whip band are, I mean, they're pretty significant in my opinion. They're not hugely accurate when it comes to metric data. I personally wore a whip band for a period of six months at the same time as wearing an aura ring. Um, I compared the metric data in terms of feedback and accuracy of the metrics. And again, Aura just totally trumped Whoop, in my opinion, and in terms of metric data accuracy of that. I mean, numbers don't lie, numbers speak for themselves. So the accuracy of a Whoop band isn't particularly great yet. Um, from a user dashboard perspective, it can be slightly confusing. I know that obviously Whoop are getting more feedback from their clients and customers as they grow in scale, and therefore developing the dashboard and the interface of that, but I didn't think it was particularly helpful. I found it quite confusing personally. Um, obviously there's no screen on the Whoop band either. Um, you have to wear for a month before unlocking all the data points you can access through Whoop as a platform. Uh, and it has, is known to have connectivity issues also from a Bluetooth perspective. So for example, I might wear it every period of a week and oftentimes there might be one or two days where I don't have any metric data come back or it's delayed because of the connectivity issues. So not particularly great as a tool there in my personal opinion. Okay, Aura Ring. Um, one of my favorite products when it comes to metric data and obviously massive in the space of entrepreneurship or info products, online products, for example, etc. Um, so the pros of an Aura Ring are very, very simple again. Uh, no other tool on the market that has the accuracy when it comes to Aura, in my personal opinion, from a metric perspective. It's a great, greatly accurate met metric tool. And again, all of my clients utilize this. We have a dashboard are called, referred to as Aura Teams, in which we can see all of our clients' Aura metrics on a daily basis. I dive into that, assess that, and give our clients feedback. And we found it to be the most accurate when it comes to connectivity. And obviously when it comes to metric data, we're being informed of also. Again, you have to think about this also from perspective of where it's getting its data from. So as you can see here, obviously wearing an Aura Ring on your ring. This is actually the thinnest piece of skin on your body and therefore the metric data being accumulated is to be the most accurate as opposed to, for example, a wrist strap like an Apple Watch. Um, obviously you think about the skin here, in terms of thickness, it's gonna be a little bit more thick and as a result of that, the metric data not quite so accurate. So very, very important. Obviously this hugs the skin very closely. So in terms of accuracy, it's gonna be pretty great. Obviously it's very sleek. Again, you are just wearing a ring, so you're not wearing a massive wristband, which is looking pretty fitnessy, so pretty easy to wear. Great battery life. It might last for up to five days to seven days um, in my experience with it anyway. Low maintenance is very durable as a product. I've had my now for over two years. There's only a little bit of wear and tear from where I've been lifting a barbell with it at the same time. Again, not the best thing to be doing, but I have done on occasion. Um, long, -time long time health tracking, so the product's gonna last for a while. And it has a great interface and dashboard when it comes to both the app and also the dashboard online. So if you're a coach in this space, also, I mean, the app looks pretty cool if you guys haven't seen that before. Um, but when it comes to dashboard online, as a coach or consultant who is running or a team, so dashboard is really great, very accessible for users also. Uh, the cons, you must get the ring sizing kit when you are purchasing. So when you are purchasing, you'll go online, uh, you'll get a sizing kit sent out to you in the next five days. And as a result of that, you'll receive the ring in the next week or two after that. So the delivery process is about two, three weeks, which is not particularly great at times. Um, obviously shipping time is then fairly extensive because the sizing cabin is being sent out first and the actual product also. Um, and then also there's one other variable which people don't really assess, but if for example, you are improving your body composition over a period of, we'll say like a month, three months, six months, you'll notice that even your, your fingers lose weight. Um, and obviously when it comes to the accuracy of aura, the ring has to be fairly tight. So if for example, you're losing excessive amounts of weight or a fair amount of weight and obviously improving your body composition, your aura ring may no, no longer fit after a period of a month, three months, six months. So you might have to send it back and get a smaller aura ring. Otherwise you'll notice, for example, uh, when it comes to data in the night, you'll notice massive periods of awake time where the ring isn't simply tracking any data. And that's simply because the ring is too loose and it's in a position which is, can no longer track data. So that is a negative potentially as well. 
Okay, let's go on to the next metric tool. So we then have a chronometer. Now, what is a chronometer? Essentially, what we can utilize this with is, is actually a macro and micronutrient tracking app. So as opposed to utilizing MyFitnessPal, the chronometer is great, and I pr primarily use it on a desktop as opposed to on my phone. So it's a great tool for not only tracking your macros, but also macro micronutrients when it comes to what you're incorporating in your diet on a daily basis, and assessing your vitamins and mineral consumption also really, really important. Um, you should definitely utilize this tool if you're curious in terms of your current diet and its nutrient density. If you guys are new to wanting to optimize your health and performance as an entrepreneur, and you want to obviously optimize your nutrition as a result of that, when it comes to assessing nutrient density, Chronometer is going to be a great tool. Uh, if you're not working with a consultant like myself, you can tell you already. It's gonna track all your vitamins and mineral consumption, spot any deficiencies and point them out to you, which is also great. And obviously deficiencies long-term can lead to many illnesses and cognitive impairments such as fatigue and brain fog. And as individuals running six, seven, eight figure businesses, obviously in terms of decision-making, having fatigue and brain fog is gonna be the last thing you're gonna want to be dealing with on a daily basis. So really, really important. Uh, you cannot adequately focus on your business if your body doesn't know the nutrients, isn't being fed the nutrients it needs to perform on a, a highly optimal basis on a daily basis as well. Okay, last metric tool we can refer to in today's video is actually just a glucose monitor. Uh, so I'm sure majority of you guys have not utilized this tool yet. And if you're about to do so, definitely do more research on it. Um, I personally utilized it previously speaking. I don't think it's something you need to utilize long-term necessarily once you have the information back from it nonetheless, but it is an awesome tool to analyze constantly causing effects of certain food sources you're consuming and obviously blood sugar and blood serum levels as well, okay? So not necessarily for everyone potentially, depending on how well optimized you are when it comes to food source you're consuming and obviously meal timings, etc. carbohydrate intake, of course. However, it is useful to see what spikes your blood sugars from the, the beginning process of optimizing your health and performance and obviously your nutrients as well in terms of food sources, frequency of food sources, how many carbohydrates you're consuming, etc. So a blood glucose monitor is great when you're first getting into this space and if you want to use it long term, great. If not, not, not necessarily an issue as well. Um, certain individuals will definitely respond differently to certain food sources. So when it comes to creating the best diet for yourself, obviously it's a very individual process. Utilizing a glucose monitor can be great in that respect. It can inform you of how you're responding to certain food sources, the amount of food you're consuming, and obviously the frequency of your meals also. So it's a great tool. And again, if you guys are dealing with irregular blood sugars, you'll notice that, for example, the first two hours of the day may be very good when it comes to focus and being optimally set per se when it comes to work and output you may suddenly experience a crash after you consume food or after you consume your lunch. That's because your blood sugars have spiked and they have then suddenly dipped. As a result of that, your ability to work is totally impaired. So again, a glucose monitor will inform you of how to prevent that from happening um, when it comes to readings and obviously data from that as well. So if you have not and are not going to be utilizing a glucose monitor, a good rule of thumb is to consume proteins and carbohydrates in every meal. And you guys should definitely be doing so if you're not already when it comes to structuring your meals. Um, when it comes to meal frequency and obviously portion size, I can talk about that in another video, but a good rule of thumb nonetheless is to consume proteins and carbohydrates in the same meal together. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on biohacking tools and metrics to optimize your health and performance as an entrepreneur. Make sure you leave this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and drop me any comments for any questions you guys have.